two of the coolest kinds of snake. And it was these two cool kinds of snake I was looking for when I was exploring this habitat that you see pictured here. Sorry, I'm getting used to this mic. Um, I was tramping through this habitat with my friend Colin, and we were herping, which is looking for reptiles and amphibians for fun, something that only weird people like myself enjoy doing. We were tramping through this habitat, and all those bushes you see, of course, are poison oak, so you can imagine how much fun that was. But we were going through, and we got to this. And this is a south-facing, rocky exposure. And as soon as I saw it, I, know, I knew this is where snakes are going to be. So my friend Paul and I are bent down, we're carefully kind of feeling around the underbrush and looking under rocks, and all of a sudden, I hear a noise. And it's, uh, and I'm thinking, ooh, what's that? And I look down, I look down at my feet, and not two feet from where I was standing, just to my left, was this beautiful, young, western rattlesnake, coiled up, trying to catch some rays of sun. Snakes, obviously, are cold-blooded. They need sun to be active and hunt their prey. But um, that's what this snake was doing. And western rattlesnakes are the only snake, only rattlesnake native to Oregon. They're a really, really cool snake. They typically are about three and a half to four feet long. They're not necessarily always really big, although the record is actually six foot two, which is taller than I am. That's a huge snake. Hopefully you don't see any of those. But when you see rattlesnakes, they're normally found just like this one was, um, coiled up. Rattlesnakes are what herpetologists Sorry. Rattlesnakes are what herpetologists call sit-and-wait predators. They're an animal that basically uh, lazes around and waits for prey to come to them. What, is, what a nice thing to do. Um, when the prey comes to them, normally in the form of small rodents like gophers and squirrels and um, other small mammals, the snake attacks. It bites and it eats its prey. But it's not just striking out blindly. Uh, rattlesnakes belong to the group of snakes called pit vipers. And pit vipers have such a cool adaptation. They have these little holes on the side of their head, called pits, that detect heat. So the snake can hunt in day or night, it doesn't matter. And they detect the body heat, and they lunge out, and with their two fangs, inject venom. And that venom is pretty nasty stuff. It's hematoxic, which means that when it goes into the prey, it basically breaks down tissue. Uh, not the most fun way to go if you're a little squirrel. It's also not fun for humans if you get bit. But rattlesnakes don't deserve the reputation they have of dangerous and um, you know, out to get us. And venom is kind of where that reputation comes from. Well, rattlesnakes are courteous. They're so nice to us. Because look at the end of their tail. Where is it? Right there. That little bunch of dried skin cells that comes from when rattlesnakes shed is their warning. They tell us when they're going to bite us. How nice of them. So, first off, the people that get bit by rattlesnakes are not normally the people that are out walking and walking down a trail and get attacked by a rattlesnake. 75% of the people that get bit are bitten due to intentional handling, meaning that they're trying to pull a steamer. Rather than backing away when they hear a rattle, they're going, oh, look, a snake, oh, I'm going to grab it, clear it out. Well, guess what? If you were picked up by your leg and swung around, you would probably bite too. And if you had venom, you would probably inject that venom that you had. So, um, they really, what I'm trying to say is they really don't deserve this bad reputation. I ended up finding, uh, I ended up finding nine that day. Um, but I was really looking for something else. And that was the mountain king snake. We got to this rock and my friend Colin said, hey, this is the magic rock. There's always two mountain king snakes under this rock. I've been herping a long time, and I've never been able to call it like that. But sure enough, we flipped this rock, and underneath are these two jewels of snakes. In the words of Alan St. John, who was, he's probably one of the best known herpetologists in Oregon, he said, this snake can elicit words of admiration from even the most confirmed snake hater. And I think that's true, because even my mom thinks this is a beautiful snake. She hates snakes. Look at that. Just gorgeous. These snakes live in the low elevation woodlands that characterize um, the Cascade foothills around us. And they're pretty secretive, you're not likely to see them. Um, I'm running out of time, so I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. This is just a gorgeous snake. And anyway, skipping ahead, um, if you do want to see these snakes, I highly suggest that you go out looking for them. They're such uh, treasures. 
mountain king snakes and rattlesnakes um, <laughs> yeah. are kind of confined now. They're only found in Lower Table Rock and Roxanne Butte and Emigrant Lake, kind of the large tracts of oak woodland left. A lot of that habitat's lost. So hopefully you go out looking, and whether you find them or not, hopefully you can um, have an experience like I had, have a smile like that, and um, add snakes to the multitude of reasons why our area is so important and so critical to these species, and why it's so worth protecting this low elevation oak woodland um, of the Cascade foothills. So thank you very much.